Good afternoon, Brian Dutcher. How are you? Great, Darren. It's great to be back in uh, San Diego. Laramie is fine to go play, but uh, that charter couldn't get home fast enough. Can you explain what it's like just to be in Laramie? I know you're not playing there like your players are, but for those of us that have never been at that level of altitude, what is it like just to walk across the street? Well, obviously, I've been going for 19 years, and uh, every time I go there, I get a headache. So I'm sure it's altitude headache of some kind. So I take a couple of aspirin and, uh, 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 and deal with the day. And so I don't play in it. I'm just sitting in it. So I think it affects the guys. How much depends on the person. But I thought our guys did a good job of fighting your way through it and getting a really gutty win last night. Sports science being what it is in 2022, Dutch, how is the approach to traveling to some of these places at altitude? How has it changed? How has it evolved? This has always come up with the Colorado Rockies, right? Like, do you want to be there ahead of time? Do you not want to be there? Get in, get out. How has it evolved with you guys at San Diego State when you have to travel to some of these places? Well, they tell me if you can play within 24 to 36 hours of arriving, uh, the effects are a little less. If you stay past that, it takes two weeks to acclimate. <laughs> so you want to get there the night before the game and get out of, you know, play the game, hopefully within 24 hours of arrival to diminish the effects. Obviously, when we had travel partners, we couldn't do that. We used to have to go to Colorado State, then up to Wyoming, Air Force and uh, New Mexico on the same road trip, BYU, Utah, when they were both in the league. And that second game seemed to have a greater toll on us than the first one. Well, congratulations. According to Twitter.com last night, Dutch, the Aztecs put themselves into the NCAA tournament last night with that win at Wyoming, 73-66. You must feel good about that. Well, see me after Thursday. I'm sure if we don't win, they'll have us back on the bubble. So, no, we just have to do what we can do, and that's win as many games as we can. We have two left. Uh, I'm hoping we get a great crowd for the finale against Fresno, senior night. Uh, I know there are tickets available. I'd love to fill this building up for a really good group of seniors. All right, so you, you don't present to the players what Pat Forty had to say and, and uh, you know, everybody else, a bracketologist, uh, Ross, you don't, you don't present to them what they were saying on Twitter last night just so they don't feel good about themselves? I just think it's too frustrating. <laughs> you know, I, I glanced today and, like, uh, someone had us, like, the last four in, and then you look at whatever the metrics people are talking about, we're, we're – uh, 30 in the net and 20 some in Camp Palm and it's like how are we not in it's like uh, all I know is if we win games we'll be in and so we have to continue to win games and we have two left in the regular season that's right I mean that's that's um, you know that's what Nick Saban would call uh, what does he call it? rat poison you know when you, you get it. all that sort of stuff all that fluffy stuff that's being said about you that's terrible for coaches you guys don't want to hear that stuff you need these guys paying attention focus to the job at hand Thursday night against Fresno that's it we want them focused on Fresno and we know what that'll be. Justin Hudson, a longtime assistant here. Uh, they're a really good defensive team. They're hard to score on. And last time we played them, uh, Baker Mazzara came out of nowhere and had, I think, four threes in the game. Uh, had a fantastic game. So uh, I'm sure they'll account for him this time, and it'll be another battle with uh, the Fresno State Bulldogs. So, Dutch, I'm watching the game last night, and you know I'm sitting on the couch, right, and, and watching, and I, th I said to myself, all right, you know, you guys, you, you pick up a possession here via rebound or, you know, inbound in the basketball, and I'm going, uh, just give it to Matt Bradley. <laughs> I mean, it seems to be having one of those nights. He scored 30 points. He had four or five assists, four or five rebounds. You know, it was a Matt Bradley night. I'm like, yeah, I think you just give the ball to Matt Bradley and, and see what happens. Could I have coached San Diego State last night? Was that pretty much the, the offensive game plan here when you guys had possession? I think that's what every player – and coach on the bench was telling me. The fans behind the bench were telling me. So it made it easy. My coaching was easy yesterday. Give the ball to Matt Bradley. And so we gave it to him enough uh, uh, where he had a fantastic night. And some of those he just creates for himself. You know, when he pulls from uh, well beyond the NBA three-point line and makes them, then, then that's a problem for everybody on the Wyoming Cowboys. And that's what he did. He stretched them out. And then once they had to go guard him out there, he took him off the dribble attack to the basket and was really good last night. Can you ever see that sort of thing coming? You know, a player who's in that kind of groove? Well, I think the coaches were laughing today. They watched him in pregame warm-ups, and I, I don't think he made a shot. And so if you were to say, well, watch him warm up, boy, he's going to be good. I think he missed every shot in warm-ups. And then you get in the game, and you take the first one that goes in, and then uh, the sky's open. And so – I don't think his warm-up was any indication of the kind of game he would have, but uh, 
you know, he's a big time player. And, and when the ball goes in early, that just gets your confidence up. Yeah, as you said, I mean, from range, driving it, when he drove, even if he's getting double team, he figures out the right guy to pass it to. Just really fun stuff watching him play last night. Brian Dutcher's joining us on Extra 1360. Up next, Fresno State coming here. Uh, 8 p.m. tip. You can listen to it here on the home of the Aztecs. Dutch, it's it's senior night on Thursday. Who for sure, I get a little confused with you know some of the COVID rules. Who for sure is playing their final home game coming up on Thursday this week? Well, for sure the final home game is Trey Pulliam, uh, Joshua Tomajic, because they used their super senior years, the bonus year. Uh, Tahiro Diabate, I believe, has used his final year. And the rest of the guys may go through uh, a senior night, but have options to come back, uh, uh, test the professional market. I don't know, Darren. I haven't had a talk with them. You know, I don't, I don't have that talk because I want them focused on this year. And uh, obviously, senior night last year, we had a senior night virtually for Josh and Trey, and they both came back. So – uh, we'll see what it is. Uh, the ones that are going through it, I haven't even sat with Matt. We're going to honor the heck out of them and, and, and then try to talk him into coming back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, yeah, that sounds like a pretty good idea. I endorse that. I co-sign that approach for you guys. Let me know if there's anything we can do to help. I, I certainly will. <laughs> you know, you mentioned, uh, you, you mentioned Pulliam. I mean, for him last night, I know we can, we can talk about Bradley. And and it's right to talk about Bradley, but there were a couple of other players last night, Dutch, just to to pick a couple out. Trey Pulliam, the jumper there, less than twenty seconds to go. Uh, your your thoughts on on what that might mean for him because he's been a little bit of a slump himself. Same same thing happened last year, Darren. He got hot at the end of the year, carried us through the top conference tournament. Some might say our best player in the conference tournament, and just caught his rhythm late, and that's what he's doing now. You know, he's had three or four good games, and he's catching his rhythm. And that's a good thing for the Aztecs as we head into uh, the Mount, uh, our final two games, the Mount West Tournament, and hopefully postseason play. And, of course, I'm just cherry-picking here, but also that a rope block at the end. Uh, and he's not even guarding the guy who takes the shot. I don't know what sort of view you had on that or if you've gone back and watched the tape on that one. But you know, who knows what happens if that shot actually gets up there. But uh, from was Jeffries, I want to say it was. But what an athletic play from him at a time where you really needed it. Yeah, AG. What a, I mean, the timing of that's incredible to take a guy that uh, Jeffries is. I think taking 111 shots in the conference, 102 of them are threes. So he was going to have a good look at it. He's a really good shooter, kind of like Jordan Shackle was for us last year. And for AG to see it coming, Trey got knocked down on a screen and get out there and block a three is incredible. Yep, and a win at Wyoming. What does it mean to you guys? You guys are on a nice roll here. The only couple of games that you've dropped here has been some dodgy refereeing. But to go to a place, Dutch, that that has a bit of a reputation, to take care of business at a place where no other visiting team had had success, and you take anything away from that? Yeah, it was special. The fact that they had not lost a home game this year, to be able to go in there and get a victory was really meaningful. Uh, but like I told them, when we came back from Boise and lost a hard game, I said uh, the next day we got to move on because we play again, and that's what we're doing today. We're going to enjoy the heck out of it last night and this morning, but uh, we'll be back in the gym at 1 o'clock and getting ready for a Thursday game with Fresno. And that was a hostile environment, like a real hostile environment. Yeah, it was. Uh, I mean, we almost had an altercation on the baseline. EK and uh, and Lamont got tied up, and Lamont kind of got pushed to the, close to the student section, and one of them jumped out there and started yelling at him and, the kid got ejected, and so it was, yeah, the environment was uh, hostile, but it was great. They're, they have great fan support. That looks like a weird place to play. It doesn't look like the seats are pointed in the right direction. Well, they shifted the building. You know, they, they had a, a different facing venue, and they kind of shifted all the seats. And so it's the same building, but they moved the seats in different directions. So it's kind of interesting that you say that because that is the case. Right. I mean, some of those seats look like they're facing the wrong way. It doesn't look like they're facing the court, which is just bizarre. I know. I know. Well, I, I don't know who designed it, you know, but uh, uh, when it's full, I know it's loud and it's hard to win in. <laughs> yes, it is. Of course. Of course. And you guys made them look. I know they came in with a good reputation. I said this right before you came on, Dutch. You, 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 I know it was a battle all the way into the end and, and the balance was hanging. But, you know, you guys, uh, you know, you, you, you really went in there and just, you know, you you. you you know, your will was the will that won the game. Like, you sort of went in there and felt like the better team all throughout the, the entire contest. 
Well, I told him we play our best basketball at the end of the year, and uh, it's March. And I said, even though it's last day of February, we're going to treat it like March, and we're going to play our best basketball in March. And so hopefully that happens with two regular season games left and then the conference tournament. Well, you seem to say it all the time. You say it enough. I guess it actually starts to become truth. Well, if you don't believe it, it can't happen. So uh, I preach that message no matter what, and then they've got to hold their end up and play really good basketball, and they've done that over the years. Yes, they have. They've got really good kids that are really good players. 19-7 and seven on the season, always searching for that, that 20th, which I know it's just one win, but it means a lot when you see uh, that start with the number two there. Dutch, we appreciate it. Have a great day at practice. We thank you very much for joining us. Thanks for having me, Darren.